away from you. Anywhere. driver was murdered in the same manner as the others. Yeah. Yeah, the police are on the job. Can I make the night edition, boss? Oh, that's swell. Yeah, I'll, I'll see you later. Goodbye. Keep the change. Thank you. It was lucky for me you came along. I was at the office working on an article for Sunday's paper when I came across this, so I made a beeline for your house. I'm very sorry I wrote that yarn now. I don't doubt it. Why didn't you tell me you saw him? I didn't see him until tonight. This was due to my love of the dramatic. In the back of my mind, I had the idea that if such an article was printed, the killer could be brought out into the open. Well, you accomplished that. Before your story was published, you were one of a million people. Now you're the one person whom he thinks can identify him. I guess I did make a mistake. Frank. Take it easy. Where are you going? Don't worry, I'll be right back. I guess it was the wind. Maybe. Frank, don't go out there. Were you looking for someone? No. I guess my nerves are a little on edge, too. Mine are doing handsprings. Well, I'll engage a room for you at a hotel. Some place where you'll be safe until this maniac's captured. I had no intention of going back to that house. Well, we'll get you settled, and then I'll report to the editor. I'll go back to the office with you. Well, don't you think you'd better take a little rest? Oh, I couldn't sleep anyway. I'm numb from the neck both ways. No, let's go. And he almost got Jean, too. No. Yep. It was the result of that story she wrote. I won't be myself until he's caught. Well, that's not going to be such an easy job. He's about as elusive as a gust of wind. We only knew what prompted his killings. It might give us a clue, something to work on. Say, the police would be satisfied if they knew how his victims died. They were poisoned, all right. But the mystery is, how? Maybe he used poison dark. No, there hasn't been a mark of any kind. The coroner's so confused that he almost held a force mortem on himself. Oh, uh, here's a note for you. It came by messenger. Thanks. Careful, Frank. It's Elmer. Elmer. What happened? Uh, I think my flashlight went off when I was, wasn't looking. Well, I'll help you. Thanks. I, uh, uh, I ought to fire you. Oh, please. Uh, not again. We thought you were the fiend. Boy, I, I'd like to run into that fiendy guy. What could you do? I'd take a picture of him, of course. I can see it now. Front view on the first page. But suppose he refused to pose for you. I, I never thought of that. Uh, I gave you that note, didn't I? Oh, yes, I forgot all about it in the excitement. It's from Ted Wallington. He says if I'll come over to the Alton Theater, he'll give me an interview. I can just make it. 
Do you intend to go? Oh, I'd like to. Wallington's quite an important person. I've always wanted to do a hard interest yarn on an adagio dancer, and this is my opportunity. Besides, it's Peter Fortune's first musical. I can syndicate his story. I don't believe I'd go if I were you. The Fiend has already struck down two members of the cast. But this story means a lot to me, and... Well, you know, lightning never strikes twice in the same place. Say, I thought that Fiend used poison. Will you pardon us if we ignore you? Oh, sure. Go ahead. I, I'm getting used to it. Well, I'm off to the Alden Theater. You mean we are? See you later, boss. I hope you're right. Hey, 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 wait a minute. I'll take a picture of that Wellington fella. I came to interview him. I thought your face was familiar. You're the one who recognized you me. You don't mind, uh, Miss Monroe would like to see Mr. Wallington. Sure, sure. He's on the stage now, but you can wait in the wings. Just this way. Change. I'll charge that at the expense account. <clears throat> so nice of you to drop over, Miss Monroe. Thank you. This is Mr. Gordon, Mr. Wallington. Glad to know you, Mr. Gordon. Likewise. Sorry I didn't know you folks were coming over. I'd have arranged something. But I received your note. My note? Didn't you send a message to the office? Why, oh, no. We'd better get out of here. It's a trap. Oh, Frank! What do you mean? Stop. He's got it marked. Why, Mr. Gordon, I don't think there's any cause for fear. <gasps>
Can't you see where you're going? Oh, uh, wise guy, eh? You know where the switch is. Turn it on. <laughs> it's Warrington. I guess he's done for. His heart's still beating. I know him. I tell you, you've got to stop him. You a man? Now, who was he? His name is... How did this happen? It's some more of the fiend's work. The fiend? Uh, what, what, was he just in here? Yes. No, I just call him a smart guy. Who? Oh. The fiend. I just bumped into him outside. Are you sure you saw him? Am I sure? Of course I'm sure. But uh, I couldn't recognize him again. Uh, please put that in the paper, will you, Frank? <laughs> One more thing, boss. Elmer didn't see him. Nobody saw him. Well, there's no question about it. It's the work of the same man. I'll keep you posted. Goodbye. Wallington said he was shot, didn't he? Yes. Yet the coroner reports there wasn't the slightest evidence of a bullet. Then how was he killed? Poison, just like the others. I didn't know there was a law against killing uh, Adagio dancers. Is that all you have to say? No. I'm wondering why this fiend is killing all these people. Well, I'm sure it isn't to rid the world of undesirables. I guess you're right. He must have a reason. And we'd like to find out what that reason is. However, we may soon know. Oh, I hope so. How? Peter Fortune has a theory. Not the Peter Fortune who wrote our show. Yeah, that's the same man. He delves into crime detection on the side. I never knew that. Well, he doesn't talk about it. But he's helped crack many difficult cases for the department. What did he say about this case? Nothing yet. I talked with him on the phone about a half an hour ago, and he said he'd come over and let me in on his secret. He should be here in five minutes. Pardon me. Hello? I didn't come in. That's fortune now. My, how quickly time passes. Hello, Pete. Uh, hello. I feel terribly about Wallington. He was a grand fellow and helped the show considerably. Yes, it's too bad. How do you do, Miss Monroe? How do you do? I'm sorry to meet you under these circumstances, but I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for your very flattering criticism of my last play. I'm sure I didn't deserve it. You're very modest. Oh, uh, do you know Mr. Gordon, Mr. Fortune? I do now. How are you, Mr. Gordon? Fine, thank you. I was just telling these people that you had an idea how the fiend killed his victims. I hope you don't mind. Not at all. Of course, my idea is nothing concrete, but it may lead to something. What is it? Well, I have an idea that he uses frozen, concentrated poison shot from a specially constructed revolver. The poison melts immediately upon striking the warmth of a body. That seems rather far-fetched to me, but maybe a thing like that might work. I don't know. I know it will work. I've seen it. You have? Yes. And I wouldn't be surprised if Sanchi had something to do with this series of murders. Who is Sanchi? Well, he, he's rather difficult to describe, although I've known him for a good many years. He's helped me on several mystery plays, that is, given me technical advice. Sanchi can devise more ways of killing people than anyone I've ever known. He has perfected just such an arrangement as I've described. Do you know where we can find him? Well, not exactly, but I know several haunts he frequents. Well, he's extremely self-conscious. You see, Sanchi is a hunchback. Hunchback? So is the fiend. Maybe you have hit on something. I'd like to question this, Sanchi. Well, as soon as I locate him, I'll turn him over to you. Do you want any of my men? Well, thanks. I think I'd better work alone for the present. Well, that's all right with me, but if Sanchi is the man we want, 
We want him. I'll do the best I can, Davis. After all, I'm vitally interested. Three people of my show have been murdered. Well, I guess there's nothing more that we can do now. Thank you very much for coming over. Not at all. Good night, Miss Monroe. I had a narrow escape tonight. Huh. So Mr. Davis told me. May I make a suggestion? Of course. Well, if I were you, I wouldn't go home tonight. Oh, I have no intention of doing so, I can assure you. Why don't you come over to the Globe Hotel, Miss Monroe? Most of the cast are staying there. Might give you a feeling of security. I think that's a splendid idea, Raven. So do I. Thank you very much. I think I'll check in at the Globe, too, if you don't mind. Not at all. I don't think we've met. My name's Fortune. Now, what's the difference as long as you're healthy? I figured there wasn't much chance of going to sleep, so I decided to keep you up a while, too. That's okay with me. I think I have as much courage as the average man, but this whole situation has sort of got me down. Well, I can easily understand that. Too bad Miss Monroe got mixed up in it. Prior to that, the fiend confined his activities to the Alden Theater. Miss Monroe is in the next room, isn't she? Yes. Police headquarters? The photographer may have told him. Well, that's possible. Anyway, I'm going to find out. That might be a gag to get me away from here. Hello? Now, get me the journal, please. Hello, journal? Mr. Harrison, please. Not in? Been gone an hour? Oh, no, 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 that's all right, thanks. Hmm. That's that. Sounds like you were right, Gordon. I'll phone the police and have them send a detail over. Let me phone for you. At least I can do that much to help the cause along. Thanks. Operate. Get me police headquarters. All right, I'll hold the wire. Bill. I want to see. Uh, I want to talk to Frank Gordon. Frank Gordon, just a moment, please. What's Frank Gordon's room number? 614. Hello? Police headquarters? I'm Bill. She wants you to send... Uh... What's the big idea? You weren't talking on that phone. Why, you... Why? Well, I'll break your neck. Now, is that a nice way to talk to me? Uh, uh... Are you mixed up in this, are you? Are you all right? Stay home, Jean. Get the door locked. Is that you, Frank? Yeah, open the door. Wait a minute. There must be something the matter with this. That's better, but you'll have to talk louder. I can't understand a thing you're saying. Hi, Frank. Oh, Elmer. 
Say, Reardon's mixed up in these killings. Have the police pick him up. Now listen, on your way over, stop at the station, bring a couple of the boys. Here? Frank, were you at my door? Elmer! Elmer! It's a fiend! He's here! The, 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 what? Gene! 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 Come in here. Listen, everything's all right. He's gone. Yes, but he might come back. You better the police. It isn't necessary. Elmer's bringing them over. Captain Davis would like to see you. Here's the wet print. Thanks. You might be surprised to hear me say this, but there's a strong possibility that Redden and Sanchi are one and the same person. <laughs> Why, that's ridiculous. Surely you'd recognize Sanchi if you saw him. Maybe not. In all my dealings with him, he kept his face well hidden. That's why my description was so vague. Sounds like you're writing a new play. That's not a bad idea. I have an overlook for a very clever actor and a master makeup artist. You can't hold me because this man has a vivid imagination. Answer me one simple little question. What's that? What were you doing at Sanchi's place? Well... Well, I, uh... Well, I went there. That's enough. Take him away. I'm innocent, I tell you. Look him on suspicion. I'm innocent. Come on. Come on. I want you to know how much I appreciate what you've done, Fortune. Oh, it was an accident, I assure you. I wish you'd drop over to the Alden Theater about 10 in the morning. I'll have everyone present who was there when Wallington was killed. And that includes Reardon. You can count on me, Captain. Good night. Good night.
Ja. Hello, David speaking. Listen, Captain, this is Elmer. I was just talking to Frank Gordon at the Globe Hotel. He says the fiend is in his room. What? Well, I don't see... Are there? I don't know. Have Brown, Kennedy, and Flynn meet me outside right away. We haven't a moment to lose. Do you know Gordon's room number? No, but I wouldn't be surprised if the clerk did. Six fourteen. Six fourteen. Here it is. Hey, oh sure. Uh, maybe you better go in first. And that's about all, boss. Oh wait a minute. We we'll find a picture of Erdin in the file, and Gene's doing the human interest on it. Oh, don't. You know what that does to me. Oh, oh, oh no, not you, boss. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Who's there? Captain Davis. Open the door. I'll be right with you. Uh, okay, boss. I'll call you later. Well, you took long enough to get here. You were talking about... He was here about an hour ago, when I spoke to Elmer on the telephone. I thought you said you'd just talked to Gordon. Well, I, I, I think I did. That was an hour ago. Uh, I, I must have fallen asleep in the telephone booth. Are you sure you aren't asleep now? What's the difference as long as you're healthy? I think Redden could throw some light on this case. I'm sure of it. We've got him locked up. I'm convinced that he's the fiend. Before I forget, I want all of you and you too at the Alden Theater at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. I'm going to reenact the death scene of Ted Wallington. And by the way, will you all please wear the same clothes? Well, uh, when's the show going to start, boss? Now, I don't want to have any trouble with you. Reardon will be here in a moment. Kelly's bringing him over. But what possible motive could Reardon have to ruin his show? That he might have been jealous of Wallington? Well, he wasn't jealous of Miss Monroe or the taxi driver. Don't forget, you claimed you could identify him. But I don't truthfully think I could. I only had one brief glimpse of him in the mirror. And, well, you've seen him lots of times. You said so yourself, and you don't know what he looks like. <laughs> That's true, but uh, perhaps we're both better off. Well, Cook, it looks very much like we're through, even if we had actors. We'd have a tough time getting an audience. Who will come and see our show now? Maybe I should have given Reardon that raise when he asked for it. I'm scared to death, Marge. Well, don't worry, gal. I'll, uh, I'll protect you. I'm still afraid. Now, I want everyone to take the exact positions they had when Wallington was killed. Well, uh, uh I, I, I was outside. I... That suits me perfectly. Come on, we were in the office. I'm afraid I don't fit in here at all. I was home asleep. Stick around. I may need you. Right. Where were you? 
I was standing next to Vera. No, he wasn't. He left me while Wallington was still on the stage. That's not true. Shut up. Stand over there. You're my lawyer. Do I have to? Well, it's all right. That's where Wallington died. Yes, I know. I'm not the fiend, and you're not going to make me say I am. Who is? I don't know. I don't know, I told you. Take your position. Turn off the lights. Come on! Oh, why don't you say something, Davis? You're doing the talking, Reardon. Yes. Yes. I'll talk. I I've never seen his face. I'll help you trap him. Anything. He wrote notes. He threatened my life. He forced me to help him. He left that bundle for me to take to his hideout. All right, all right. Who is the man, Reardon? Who is he? I don't know. I don't know for sure. But I think his name is... here somewhere. Anyone go out that door? No, Captain. Well, what's happened now? Reardon's dead. Is there another entrance beside the stage door? Yeah. found this man trying to get out. Bruce Cromwell. You know him? Yes. He runs the theater on the next block. I didn't kill him. I had nothing to do with it. I came in. It was dark here. A man rushed by me, aimed a gun. And when I saw what happened, I tried to get out. You'll have a tough time getting out of this. This sort of fellow is a monkey wrench in the works. I don't agree with you. There's some connection between these two men. At least this one has a motive. Let me go. Talking about... All right, Cromwell. Kelly, take him to the station. Let's get going. You can lend me a hand if you're not too busy. I'm your man, Captain. I'll send the coroner right over. Don't let anyone disturb the body until he gets here. Anything happen? No, not a thing. Did they, want, did they want me now? I can't imagine why. Hey, can I do anything? I doubt it. Uh, I... Wow. This has been like a nightmare, Frank. Well, he missed you again. Just a minute, girls. I might as well tell you now, the show is closed. It's a blow to Mr. Wilson and myself, as well as you. But when this mystery is cleared up, we may be able to open again. Well, it's a nice day, even if I do say so myself. I think we'd better notify the newspapers to cancel our advertisements at once. Well, I'll stay here if you gentlemen have work to do. Thanks. Look! Rear 
is dead. Yes, yes, we know. Do you mind waiting here with Elmer for a moment? I want to look around. All right. If you could present a motive why Fortune would want to do this thing that you're trying to tack on him, a story. Now, I don't think I'm trying to discourage you, of course. Being caught, too. And Fortune would suit me just fine. Well, I can see the headlines now. Famous playwright revealed as... That story would be worth $2,000 to this paper. We could use $2,000, couldn't we, Jean? Yes, darling. Well, that's settled. <clears throat> Evidently, you're going to follow through with this, this hunch of yours. Yes. Well, good luck. Thanks. I think I'll stick around the office. After all, I do work here. <laughs> I do, too. Don't you be too sure about that. And am I ambitious? Come on, let's go. <clears throat> uh, may I use your phone? Sure. Hello, Fritzy. Give me the morgue. Hello, George. Uh, look through the files and get all the material on Peter Fortune, the playwright. Yes, everything. I'll be right down. Boy, is this a break. What? Oh, oh nothing. Thanks, Georgie. Uh, keep that alive for me, will you? Come in. Hello, Miss Wilson. Hi, Miss Cook. Say, I'm doing a feature story on Peter Fortune. If you've got any old photographs around here, I certainly could use them. Well, they sir. You know, I chanced to pick up an old newspaper in the office. It had a story in it about Fortune's first play. Certainly was a terrible break if the theater burned up on the opening night. Yes, it was. We produced that play. Yes, I know. The man next to Fortune is his brother, am I right? Yes. Too bad he burned to death. Buzz, we felt terrible about that, too. Does he ever mention it? Not to us. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you a lot. The lawyer gets here. Well, uh, that's his privilege. Will you wait? Uh, no, uh, no, Captain, I've got to go. I, I've got some very important business. Well, thanks for your cooperation. Well, don't mention it. Don't mention it. I think you'll find all the information you want on that. Hmm. Forty people died, eh? It was a bad one. Cook and Wilson, the producers, nearly went to jail over it. Is that so? Why? They were suspected of arson. But the company couldn't prove anything against them. Well, thanks a lot for your information. Quite welcome. Come in. Did either of you gentlemen find a cigarette case? I didn't. Neither did I. Sorry. I think I'll take a look backstage. Well, how's the boy detective? I've got a motive, boss. For living? Oh, I'm, I'm serious. I run across a reason why Fortune wants to ruin Cook and Wilson. But what have they to do with all this? Well, I'll tell you. Ten years ago... Hello, Mr. Fortune. Hello, Pop. I lost something. I may have dropped it when I was here before. Do you mind if I look around? Why, sure not. Go ahead. Thank you. Did you find it? Yes, thank you. And I believe Peter Fortune blames Cook and Wilson for his brother's death. Well, don't forget, Gordon. Most that you've told me is the result of a vivid imagination. It's plausible. But not plausible enough to convince a jury. Why, you couldn't even arrest the man on suspicion. You lack evidence. Oh, what about this case? 
Well, that could have been dropped a week ago, for all we know. Uh, perhaps you'd better return the case and forget all about it. No, sir, I'm not through yet. Uh, did, it, did, it, did you send for me? Yes, go with the Belmont gymnasium and get a few pictures of the champ. If I could only trail Fortune, I'm sure I could get some evidence. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to trail him some other time. We've got a paper to get out. And if you don't get going, the champ may lose his crown before you get there. Okay, boss, I I'm gone. <laughs> I don't know what I could have done without you. Everything happens to me. Here's a yarn about Cromwell being the latest suspect. Mr. Gordon, his man outside wants to see you. Oh, me? Yes. Thanks. Oh, how do you do, Gordon? Oh. How are you, Mr. Fortune? Uh, you pardon the intrusion, but I lost my cigarette case backstage at the Alden. I thought perhaps you'd found it. Why, uh, no. I'm sorry. It had a great deal of sentiment attached to it. Well, it's too bad you lost it. The finder will enjoy it. Any news on Cromwell? No, but I may have some startling facts this afternoon. I'm on my way to see Sanchi. Oh, good. I'll go with you. No. I think I'd better go alone. Sorry, too. I'd like to give you a break, Gordon. Bye. So long, Fortune.
Frank is right. Frank is right. Did you get those pictures? Uh, no. Uh, where is Gordon? In the editorial office. Uh, Say. Hey, Frank is right. He is right. Well, it's a since you aren't. Well, where's Frank? I don't know. He was here just a few minutes ago. I've seen Sanchi and the gun the fiend used to kill all those people. You have? Where? In, in a little shack on the outskirts of town. Frank was right, Jean. Peter Fortune is mixed up in this. Well, it looks like Frank and I are going to be $2,000 richer. Uh, when are you going to get married? Just as soon as I can drag him to an altar. <laughs> oh, do you know where Mr. Gordon is? Yes, ma'am. I seen him about five minutes ago. Where? Uh, he's talking to a Mr. Fortune out in the hall. Fortune? Where are they? I don't know. They just laughed. Uh, you don't really think Frank's in any danger, do you? I don't know, but we can't afford to take any chances. Angie, you've helped me again. Gordon, I'll take that cigarette case. Sanchi did the trick, eh? Sanchi is a clever man. He's devised more ways of killing people than anyone I've ever known. He's helped me on plays. We've written a story together. A story of vengeance. Vengeance we've waited ten years to pay. <laughs> Cook and Wilson will never produce another show. They kill my brother! I helped to make them successes. Now Sanchi and I have ruined them. Do you see? Sanchi and I are one. <laughs> you and your newspaper have branded me the fiend. Gordon, you haven't got a chance. I would have killed you that night in the hotel room, but unfortunately, the gun that fires my concentrated poison will only hold one bullet. <laughs> Have you any idea why I was so concerned about my cigarette case? You said it had a lot of sentiment attached to it. <laughs> yeah, I should have said a great deal of incriminating evidence. Frozen poison. <laughs> That's right. I wouldn't like to slight you. You're a man. Not mad, Gordon. Clever. Gordon, have you any unfinished business in this world that, that I could take care of? Fortune. Did you get him? Yes. 
Well, that's the end of that bird. Remind me, never to ignore you again. I'll phone the story in and have Harrison rush out an extra. Oh, did you bring your camera? Yeah, uh, no, I, I, I left it at the office. What? That's great work, Frank. Great. But don't you ask me for a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really had nothing to do with the capture. Uh, the credit for that goes to Elmer. Ah, uh, Frank, if it hadn't been for you, uh, uh, checks and cash here, Mr. Harrison. Well, the checks made out to you. You can argue it out between you. Well, I'll endorse it, but it's yours, Elmer. Hey, I won't take any part of that. You can just uh, consider this a uh, wedding present. Is somebody getting married? Yeah, as sure as Jean can uh, drag him to the altar. Why, Elmer? <laughs> Don't worry, darling. You won't have to drag me. Thanks, Elmer. That's all right, huh? You know, you really ought to get married, too. It isn't right for a man to live alone. What's the difference as long as you're... I know, I know. As long as you're healthy. <laughs> <laughs>